The lecture today is about introduction to the clinical medicine, and this is the second lecture. So before we start, we have important few thoughts before you go through the uh, summary of the previous lecture regarding the history taking. First of all, treat patients as you would want yourself or a family member to be cared for. Do the right thing. This applies to patient care and your dealings with colleagues and other health care workers. Never be afraid to ask questions. Always you have to ask questions and you ask why this occurred, why this happened. So never to be afraid to ask questions. So these are important thoughts to be kept in your mind uh, when you are dealing with patients and to start your clinical practice in medicine. So to summarize the previous lecture, I mean the history taking, as we mentioned before, that we start with the preliminary data, that is, we mentioned that this is labeled as database regarding the name of the patient, age, sex, occupation, religion, and other things that we mentioned in the previous lecture. And we talk about the importance of these uh, different uh, data, and we call it database. So the chief complaint or chief concern, the presentation begins with a one with a one sentence description of the patient and the reason prompting their evaluation. That is the chief complaint. This is a teaser that sets the tone for the information to follow. This means they present the start of how to uh, evaluate the patient. This means that this opens the door to the uh, incoming uh, other information uh, from the patient in order to solve their problem. So the next, after the chief complaint, history of present illness. This is presented in both a problem-based and chronological fashion. That is the dominant problem. Complaint serves as the centerpiece of the history. If there is more than one problem, the presenter may try to link them together when appropriate. Information re related to this main theme is presented in chronological. This means that patient may present it with more than one problem. So always try to link these problems under one headache as far as uh, possible. For example, patient presented complaining from chest pain and uh, shortness of breath and palpitation so all these may be due to cardiac problem, for example, ischemic uh, heart disease. And always try to put this abnormality in a chronological uh, order, that is to mention the date of their occurrence accordingly. For example, patients said that he had chest pain half an hour before admission, but he had this pain two, three uh, weeks before, and now the pain become more severe and it is uh, associated with shortness of breath, which is dated back to more than four, three weeks, and palpitation, again, uh, with the same uh, duration. So you have to put the uh, precise duration of the, uh, each complaint in a chronological order. Review of system. The critical positive and negative findings discovered during a review of system are generally incorporated at the end of the patient's history. These questions are designed to uncover illnesses which might travel with the main problem. If it is completely negative, it is generally acceptable to simply state that review of systems were negative. By here, review of system, as we mentioned, that this to review the other system which is not covered, which are not covered in the history of present illness. This means that if, the, if you think that the patient's problem related to respiratory uh, system and you cover the respiratory system uh, in the uh, history of presenting illness, when you come to review of other system, so the respiratory system should not be 
involved in the history uh, of uh, review of other uh, system because you cover this in the history representing illness just to mention the symptoms related to the other system that is not covered in the history of presenting illness. Past medical history note is made of any other past medical problems which the patient has that are not related to the current complaint. So any past medical history that the patient had should be looked for and mentioned because it could be related or not related to the current problem. Past surgical history, any prior surgeries along with the year in which they occurred are noted. All surgery that the patient had before, this should be looked for and with the year of their occurrence should be noted. Medications, allergies, all current medications along with those root and frequency are mentioned. So the importance of history taking as of a drug history of medication, not only to label the patient as having hypersensitivity or allergy to certain drugs, which is definitely very important, but also to know which medication that the patient use, their dose, their roots, and the other important thing that when we're going to prescribe a drugs to the patients in order to avoid drug interaction with, with what patient uh, receive or treated by before. Smoking and alcohol and any other substance abuse, cigarettes and alcohol are highlighted because their use is so widespread and the deleterious effects associated with the prolonged exposure well documented. So Chronic smoker, those cigarette smoker, chronic, may have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and this will end with uh, respiratory failure, embryogenic carcinoma, and sometimes patient may have secondary polycythemia, that is an increase in hemoglobin and the blood viscosity, an increase in packed cell volume. Those with uh, chronic alcohol consumption may have alcoholic liver disease, for example, and uh, this may end with a chronic liver disease and liver cirrhosis. Uh, and this is end with uh, liver failure. Any additional substance abuse, for example, cocaine use, intravenous drugs, etc., should also be mentioned. Uh, heroin and other substances uh, should be uh, mentioned because, because this may, may have an impact and may be a cause for the uh, patient problem. Regarding social work history, this includes a brief description of the patient's work and home environments. Sexual history, if relevant to the oral presentation, would also be presented here. By oral presentation, I mean that you are going to present the case to a uh, listener. And uh, if you think that sexual history if may be important regarding the presenting problem of the patient, this may, uh, may be mentioned in the social uh, history. Any unusual work related exposures should be noted again. Family history emphasis is placed on the identification of illnesses within the family, particularly among first degree relatives that are known to be genetically based and therefore potentially inherited by the patient. This would include history of coronary artery disease, diabetes, certain neoplasm, etc., because these diseases may have uh, familial uh, predisposition. Now, after the end of this summary regarding the uh, how to take history and the point that you have to concentrate on and the systematic uh, application of this history taking, then you have to proceed to physical examination. As we said that uh, in order to diagnose a patient and to solve their problem, we have the proper history taking followed by physical examination and this to be followed by certain and important investigations in order to clarify the patient problem, to solve the problem of the patient by making the diagnosis and later on you can cure or prevent or treat whatever possible uh, according to uh, your diagnosis.
So by physical examination, and here we concentrate on general examination, this begins with a one sentence description of the patient's appearance along with their vital signs. In general, only positive findings are noted. Only positive findings are noted. So here we, took, we concentrate on mental state of the patient, whether the patient is awake, alert, appropriate, and completely oriented. Because sometimes patient may and be unconscious, may be comatose, may be loss of conscious or comatose. So by examining the patient, uh, you said that the patient is awake, is alert, and he is oriented about the time, person, and the place. So you have, in order to assess the orientation of the patient, you have to ask about uh, whether he is oriented regarding the time. You ask the patient roughly, what is the time now? He, he, if he answered you, uh, not necessarily precisely the time, but approximately say that this is a daytime, the time is about 10 uh, a.m. And this is true. So he's oriented about time and about the uh, places to ask the patient, uh, he or she presented now where he is uh, now, whether at home or at hospital, he should ask uh, you precisely. If so, so this is, uh, you label the patient as oriented for uh, places. And the uh, other important thing, whether he's oriented about the uh, person, so they, he, he know or she know the, uh, those who are companion with him or to know a doctor wearing a, a white coat, who is he or she, and then he can uh, label that this is a doctor. And to mention the emotional state of the uh, patient, whether he is anxious, whether he is uh, calm or not. Gait, this is important. So you have to examine the patient uh, from the first look to the patient, Would the patient come to you, uh, or if the patient sit and he can walk, at, you have to ask the patient to walk in front of you in order to uh, assess his or her gait. Physique, you have to look to the general condition of the patient, whether the patient is regarding the, he's short or tall, uh, he's muscular, fat, thin, all these should be uh, mentioned because all these may have an impact uh, on the disease, certain diseases, for example, patient with thalassemia, a patient look shorter than colleagues with the same uh, age. And this is particularly for patients with thalassemic syndrome, for example. Other patients may have, uh, they look taller than uh, their friends and colleagues, and this could be due to disease like uh, Marfan syndrome and due to other abnormality of the endocrine disorders. Patient may have overweight or fat or obese, and this could be due to a disease. For example, patient with Cushing syndrome may have uh, central uh, obesity, or the patient may look thin, and this could be due to disease uh, like malabsorption, or maybe due to malignancy even. Then you have to look to the face of the patient and uh, expression, whether the patient, as we said, the patient is anxious and impatient with a staring eye, as in those with hyperthyroidism, thyrotoxicosis, or the patient is uh, depressed, uh, depressed mood and buffy face, and uh, this is a current patient with hyperthyroidism. Patient may have asymmetry of the face, particularly this is due to nerve palsy, uh, for example, uh, seventh cranial nerve palsy. Patient may have abnormally, abnormally large nose, uh, nose and large eyebrow, large forehead, and this could be due to acromegaly, due to excessive growth hormone, and so on. So by looking to the face, uh, a lot of information you can uh, gain by uh, inspection of the face of the patient, and this may give you clue to the possible underlying uh, cause for this uh, abnormality. Regarding the skin, again, the skin may give you a clue to the uh, presence of certain physical sign, and these physical signs 
reflect the possible underlying disease. For example, pallor, maybe it, the skin look, looks pale, and this with the conjunctiva also pale, the mucous membrane pale. This is the golden sign for of patient with anemia, or patient may have a yellow skin and sclera, and this is uh, jaundice. Our patient may have a blue discoloration of the uh, tongue or the lips or and the finger, and this is central uh, cyanosis with different underlying causes for central uh, cyanosis. It could be uh, the most common cardiovascular or respiratory disease. Edema here, it may, a patient may have swelling, and this may occur at the lower back or in the legs or in the hands, and this could be uh, due to different diseases uh, affecting the heart, affecting the kidney, affecting the uh, liver, or, uh, or maybe due to low level of albumin. Hands, the hands who have to look to the hands of the patient, there may be shake hands, tremor. The shape of the hand is important. Some uh, abnormality in the hand may be due to certain diseases. For example, there may be ulnar deviation of the hand and this could be occurring in patient with rheumatoid arthritis. The joint is important to be examined. Again, as in patient with, for example, rheumatoid arthritis, the joint may be abnormal and give you an uh, uh, abnormality in the shape of the uh, joint. Regarding the nail, the nail, again, may give you a clue to the possible underlying cause. For example, clubbing of the finger uh, that is the increased uh, longitudinal curvature of the uh, nail and with the loss of the angle of the nail and the swelling of the soft tissue at the base of the nail. Uh, this could be due to uh, different type of the diseases. Again, it may affect the heart, it could affect the GIT or respiratory system. The finger should be examined. Uh, again, the, there may be uh, abnormality, as we mentioned, in the joint, fusiform swelling of the joint. Again, this may occur in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. Regarding the feet, we have to look for, there may be ulcers in the feet, for, and this may be due to certain diseases as patients with diabetes, patients with sickle cell disease, or patients with peripheral uh, vascular disease. There may be ulcers or peripheral neuropathy. Edema, again, the same as we talk about in patients with, uh, by looking to the uh, feet, there may be edema. And ankle edema, this may occur due to a heart disease, or it could be generalized edema, uh, not only in the feet, and this due to, for example, nephrotic uh, syndrome. Ischemia, again, as we mentioned, that patient with peripheral vascular disease may have impairment of a blood supply to the uh, feet, and this may result in the uh, impairment of the blood supply. This results in, uh, in the peripheral vascular disease, and this may end with gangrene uh, of the uh, feet. Neck examination is important to look for the uh, lymph nodes, the thyroid glands, and the carotid. So by lymph nodes, we have to examine the submental, submandibular, periauricular, postauricular, uh, anterior cervical, posterior cervical, supraclavicular, infraclavicular, and occipital lymph node. All these areas should be examined uh, because this may be due to uh, different type of diseases from the benign to malignant uh, disease. The thyroid gland, may be enlarged, the thyroid gland, so it is called goiter, could be diffusely enlarged as in patients with Graves' disease, and this results in hyperthyroidism, or just simple goiter with normal thyroid uh, function. Carotid artery to be examined because patient with uh, stroke may, may have carotid stenosis, and this may result in the Pruvi, that is a normal sound by auscultation of the carotid uh, artery. Regarding the breasts, redness, ulcer, dimpling, nipple discharge. So all this abnormality may uh, be encountered by examination of the breast. And in, by examining a patient, uh, female patients, uh, you have a companion, you have the relatives or the nurse with you when you examine. 
and patient presented with this abnormality with their breast, uh, they should, the breast should be palpated for presence of masses, particularly those more than 35 years to uh, exclude presence of a lump or swelling that is, could be due to malignancy. The axillary, the site for lymph nodes. So the lymph nodes may be enlarged in the axillary uh, region and the patient may have a cervical axillary lymph node and an iguanal lymph node and these are bilateral, symmetrical and present for a certain period of time is considered to be generalized lymph adenopathy. Temperature, normal. Temp the vital signs again should be checked and the important vital sign, the temperature. So we have oral temperature checking by thermometer, normal 36.8 to 37.2 Celsius. Respiratory rate, normal rate in adults, 14 to 18 breath per minute. Patient may have wheeze, strider, wheeze. This is abnormally musical sound. And this can be heard even without a stethoscope in those patients with severe uh, airway obstruction. For example, bronchial uh, asthma. So try there, this is due to abnormal uh, voice uh, due to uh, upper airway obstruction. Chine stocks uh, respiration, this abnormal pattern of breathing characterized by a cycle of hyperapnea and apnea, apnea, there will be uh, retention of CO2. So the body try to wash these uh, excess CO2, there will be hyperapnea. So there will be a features of hyperapnea and apnea and this occurring patient with organ failure like advanced heart failure. Others is important patient, if you have smell of others of alcohol, this means that the patient is alcoholic. Diabetic ketoacidosis, so patient, you smell acetone smell. If you smell a, a, a acetone smell in the world or from the patient, this gives you a clue that the patient have diabetes and this is the uh, acute complication of diabetes called diabetic ketoacidosis. The same applied for patient with uh, renal failure, chronic renal failure, uremia, and this uh, may give you a, a smell of urine. Uh, patient with liver failure, uh, this is due to called fetal hepaticus, give abnormal uh, mousy smell. Or patient may have uh, bad uh, dental hygiene and this, this give you uh, an, uh, a bad smell. So to end the schema for routine examination, we have general appearance of the patient. So you, we have to examine the patient from the hair to the toes. So here, eyes, face, mouth and pharynx, neck, upper limbs, thorax, which include lung, heart, anterior, lateral, and posterior part, abdomen, should be examined, lower limbs and excreta. Examination of excreta to examine the uh, urine, uh, sometimes uh, by an inspection of the urine, uh, this again may uh, may have an impact on the path uh, certain diseases. Uh, red color urine may be due to hematuria. Uh, brown, red brown may be due to hemoglobin urea. Uh, so this may give you uh, an idea about the patient uh, complaint. It could be due to urinary tract disease or it could be due to blood disorders. Deep yellow that occur in patients with, uh, for example, hepatitis due to uh, an increase uh, in conjugated bilirubin, and this will be excreted in the urine, give a T-color urine. So these are some of the physical signs that this is a homework for you as a quiz to answer these and to clarify what abnormal physical sign is present and to answer some questions. So this patient is the snake, what are other areas to look for? Mention the mechanism and enumerate some causes. So there is abnormality in the finger of this patient and nail. So what is this abnormality? And what do you think the possible underlying causes and mechanism? Again, here, as we mentioned earlier, that there is abnormality in the skin. So what is your diagnosis? Same for the skin and so eye, by, examining, by examination of the eyes and the skin, there is abnormal physical sign. So what do you think this 
abnormal physical sign is. Here, by inspection of the abdomen, there is abnormality. So what do you think that this abnormality is due to? Again, here in the skin, there is abnormality in the skin. There is change in the color and resulting in this abnormality. So what, do you, what is the possible underlying cause for these changes? Again, this is the abnormal color of the skin. What is your diagnosis? Here, this patient have an abnormality on her face. So what do you think the possible underlying uh, cause or what, how you describe this abnormality? The references for these two lectures from the McLeod, from the expert and practical guide to clinical medicine. And thank you.